because you've got so many knots building up, building up, you go straight to an emotional Charlie horse. And now when you're an emotional Charlie horse phase, or again, what it's called being emotionally triggered, you, you are no longer in control of your emotions once you allow yourself to get to that point, which is where, you know, it's just dangerous being in that when you're completely emotionally hijacked and emotionally triggered, emotional Charlie horse, you know, now you have, you know, you've lost control, so to speak, until again, your body subsides from that, that chemical rush of those, of those emotions. is going on EQ gangsters had an amazing chat today with one of the guys that I have kind of coached through our EQ tra uh, courses and training and that kind of thing and super guy super super guy and <laughs> he, he had a, a massive blow up today and with his, with his, with his family, where he just exploded. He texted me shortly thereafter and said, "Man, Noble, I'm so pissed and embarrassed that I, I just completely lost it. Even after the coaching you've done with me, which has been incredibly helpful, but I've regressed." And so, boom, I texted him back, and 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 he said, "He's like the biggest thing I'm upset about is, obviously, is the fact that that I let myself get to that point." and obviously hurting my my family and you know i said dude i 100 percent have have been there and and not just like i you know multiple times and even after you know four years into my journey of emotional growth and emotional fitness i, I mean i've done it recently you know and i've done podcast episodes on that so so I said, you know, I said, dude, this, this is a, this emotional committing to your emotional fitness it is, is just that it's a commitment. It's not something that, you know, you can, you can go to the emotional gym once or for a weekend or for even a month or two months and expect to be emotionally fit, especially when we've been emotionally out of shape for, in some cases, two, three, four decades. And so all of that impacts you know, our, our, our journey of how long it takes us to become emotionally fit and emotionally healthy. And so one of the analogies that I shared that's been life changing for me and for a couple of the folks that I've been, that I've been coaching in my corporate, a couple of my corporate clients that I want to share with you all. And I'll, and, and, I'll, and I'll get to that here in just a second. I just want to thank you guys so much for your continued support, your encouragement, sharing your own emotional growth journey with us, whether you're watching on our YouTube channel, whether you're listening on our podcast. For those of you all that have already joined and signed up for the wait list to be a part of our community, our membership, which is called EQ Mafia at eqgangster.com forward slash mafia, eqgangster.com forward slash mafia. Thank you. I'm telling you, you will not regret it. It has got so much value and support and encouragement and content that you're going to get transformational skinny from like life changing. And, and, I, and, and here's why I'm not, this is not, this is, and here's the only reason I can say that because this is not like a sales pitch. It's literally the stuff that I have been applying in my own life in our own lives that has caused and is causing me to change and transform my own life in every area of my life. Some more than others, some I'm further along in other areas, but nonetheless, like I'm, I'm only sharing skinny that I either have applied and or am applying that has led to and is leading to long-term change and transformation. So that's why I am so confident in my promotion of this membership group, the EQ Mafia. 
and and thank you for supporting me in my own journey. I just had a, I, I just had a relapse recently where I was in a, a kind of an emotional funk and depression for for like a couple months, and where I was a hypocrite. I did not do or apply a lot of the tools and exercises that have helped me in the past four years. I didn't. I did. I, I reverted back to my old pre EQ growth ways of the four emotional deadly sins, the four deadly sins of emotions, stuffing, avoiding, stewing, and brooding. And, and so I'm very much on this emotional growth journey with you all. So please understand that I'm not coming from a place of, I have arrived, I am this emotionally healthy fit, you know, bodybuilder, <laughs> emotional bodybuilder, and you are these emotional weaklings and whatever like that is not it at all. I am very much in my emotional fitness journey as well with very recent setbacks and 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 uh, areas that that I have not done a good job in. You know, in in many of the different areas that I've been sharing to to apply or do differently in your emotional growth journey. So. So anyway, I am absolutely in this journey with you guys. So, and thank you for being in this journey with me as well in my victories and failures. And so this, this lesson, this analogy that God gave me the, this, again, this past week coaching one of my clients was revolutionary for me and for this guy. And then having, and then since then I've passed it on to the, the call I got today, <laughs> uh, which was <laughs> which was a great conversation, a great conversation. I kind of helped him, walked him through that whole process. Okay, you know, I, I, I affirmed him, dude, I completely understand how you'd be upset at yourself for slipping. Again, I just absolutely did the same thing myself. You know, I, my explosion is different now because I'm emotionally healthier, but nonetheless, what I did was I regressed into my emotional cave for multiple, multiple days. Well, and man, you could almost even argue for a couple months because um, again, I just did not do it. I, I just didn't do a super job of, of, of how I responded or handled my emotional funk and my emotions. I did not do a good job of, of, of self-awareness and self-management over the past couple months. And so, so, what I, the analogy that I shared was that, that I've learned recently that's super powerful is when he, when he called me up, he said, so I exploded on my wife because, you know, she had brought up an issue that, you know, that she's passionate about and I'm passionate about, but we, but we're passionate at very different things about this topic. I didn't want to bring it up because it, it you know, it's, it's a very, emotional topic <laughs> that, uh, well, well, no, actually I will, I will, I will bring this up. Well, should I, let me think about this. <laughs> so, so it, let's just say it's a very emotional topic, political topic, and which is honestly why I think it is emotional. Sometimes it's, you know, it's one of the same almost political topics are, it can be, and are in many cases, very emotional. And they have two very different political perspectives on this topic. And she said, Hey, I want to, I want to promote this particular kind of political perspective. And he's on the very opposite side and he loses it, right? You know, gets really upset and loses it, hurts his wife's feelings. And I think his son was in the area as well. So it was a very emotional, significant emotional event for everybody involved in that, that was there in the conversation. And boom, 10 minutes after he blows up, 15 minutes after he blows up, he goes back in and says, man, I totally dropped the ball. I'm so sorry. You know, totally, totally lost my cool. Obviously, you know, what will you forgive me? And, and then he texts me and says, dude, I lost, you know, lost it. You know, all this EQ growth, which you've been helping me with. I totally regressed. Da, da, da. All right, so so let me fast forward kind of this through this analogy. So what I said is happening is, and, and he said, let me give you some context. I said because I asked this. I said, did could you feel yourself building up to this explosion, or was it like out of the blue? He said, no, no, it was definitely building up. And I said, okay, so what what led to what led to it? He said, well, earlier in the morning, he had a work experience that 
at his job that involved the same political discussion. And, you know, he got super pissed and frustrated at work based on this political perspective. And, you know, and so, and he said, do, and then boom, when the political perspective brought up again, when my wife brought it up again, I just, I just lost it. And so I said, okay, well, what, what happened was from an emotional perspective, when you blew up or when you, when you felt all the emotions this morning from your work experience at, at your job, those caused a series of emotions, intense emotions that you have around this particular topic. And, and let's say, you know, cause a lot of times it's not just one emotion. A lot of times there are multiple emotions that we are experiencing. And so I said there, dude, you, you know, there's probably five different emotions. Let's just say there was five, five emotions that you, that you, that hit you as a result of what happened at work this morning around this political topic. And, and, um, and I said, what happens is those are all emotional knots. So imagine when you get a knot in your muscle from, you know, working out or sitting a certain way for so long or, you know, a long road trip and you get these knots in your neck or your shoulders, your back, like it, you know, knots. Now some, now here's what's interesting. Some knots I'm aware of, some of my knots and my muscles I'm aware of and some knots I, I, I am not aware of. I don't even realize they're there until like my wife is maybe giving me a massage on my neck and like, oh snap, wow, that hurt and hurts. But you know, when, you, when you're massaging that out there, that, that hurts. So I didn't even realize it was there. So, and that's what happens a lot of times is our emotional knots, many of them, we're not even aware that they're there. Some of them we are, some of them we're not. Obviously, as we increase our emotional fitness and therefore our emotional self-awareness, we can become more aware and in tune to when we have an emotional knot. So what? Ha and then, so then, what I, ha I said happens is you you just had five emotional knots immediately show up in your emotional body, so to speak, your emotional muscles. You had five knots show up. Then fast forward a couple hours later, you're at home, and your wife brings up this topic. And boom, all five of those emotional knots now turn into a g emotional Charlie horse where you, your muscles, your emotional muscles get completely locked up and you just explode. You completely lose it. And, and now, again, very similar to, to an emotional, to a Charlie horse, it's almost like you have no control of, over that once your muscle gets in lock mode, right? Once it gets in, in that... Um, that locked state, you're, you're almost kind of at the mercy of that muscle until it decides to release and loosen. Now you can stretch, right? You can kind of stretch that particular muscle out in some cases, depending on where it's at. Some cases you can't, and you just have to wait till that muscle kind of releases. If you ever had any back pain, intense back pain, you know, sometimes I've been able to, 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 to work out or loosen up that when my back has locked up, but then there's been a couple times where I'm literally at the mercy of my back and it's taken days. And in one particular case, it was really bad. It took a couple weeks before my back finally loosened up, which is a survival mechanism of the back and, and of the body. Uh, it's a survival mechanism. Well, specifically of the back because it's protecting the spine because that's, a you know, obviously all our whole nerve center, everything is, is all along that spinal column. So super massive protection mechanisms that happen there with the spine and muscles. And so, so I said, dude, if, if you had, so this is what I told him to do. I said, look, the next time, the next time you get triggered and you get five emotional knots again, and I'm using the number five, it could be one, it could be three, it could be 10, whatever amount of emotional knots you get. I said, dude, let that be a, a, a secondary trigger to, to immediately grab a paper and pen or a note notes in your, your, your phone or your laptop, whatever, for you to immediately start writing down each of the emotions that you're feeling. 
each of those emotional knots. So write those emotional knots down. And then allow yourself, set your alarm, 60 to 90 seconds, and allow yourself to feel each of those emotional knots. And I said, that is how physiologically, when you allow yourself to name each of those emotional knots, anger, frustration, embarrassment, rejection, disappointment, sadness, uh, whatever whatever the, 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 the emotion is, that emotional knot is, then once you name it, that's the first step, you gotta name it, you have to identify it, but then set your watch alarm, your phone alarm for 60 to 90 seconds and allow yourself to feel that each of those specific emotional knots because each emotional knot feels differently. They don't, they don't, they're all different, right? So they all feel differently. So give yourself 60, 90 seconds to feel, because typically it takes 60 to 90 seconds for your, your body, your mind and your body to really feel the, the depth of that particular emotion when you focus, allow yourself to focus, no distractions. And so he's like, dude, stop with this hippie mumbo jumbo. Like that stuff doesn't work. I said, well, dude, how's your way working? <laughs> right? Your way is clearly not working. And I said, the other way I know that your way is not working is because that used to be my way <laughs> and it didn't work for me either. He said, because he's like, well, I, I know what I'm feeling. Why do I need to write it down and like write some poetry about how I'm feeling, right? Some mumbo jumbo. I said, no, no, dude, it's not poetry. <laughs> it's not some flowery, like write down like exactly how you're feeling. And the more accurate you can write down how you're feeling, the more your mind and your body can work out and massage each of those emotional knots. And, and be thorough because if you don't, if you're not thorough about feeling and expressing, if you guys heard me say the go ape exercise, acknowledge permission to feel, express, acknowledge permission to feel and express that go ape exercise. And there's more to it than that. It's, I think it's one of my previous episodes. I talk about that. You know, when you allow yourself to do that and be thorough with that exercise, now your body can, can go back to its stasis, right? Can go back to kind of a, uh, 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 you know, a great starting point of, of neutralness and balance versus always walking around with these emotional knots. And so then as the, soon as the next trigger happens, boom, because you've got so many knots building up, building up, you go straight to an emotional Charlie horse. And now when you're an emotional Charlie horse phase, or again, what it's called being emotionally triggered, you are no longer in control of your emotions once you allow yourself to get to that point, which is where, you know, it's just dangerous being in that when you're completely emotionally hijacked and emotionally triggered, emotional Charlie horse, you know, now you have, you know, you've lost control, so to speak, until again, your body subsides from that, that chemical rush of those, of those emotions. So, he was like, oh man, that analogy is so huge of, of, you know, kind of working out those emotional knots so that it doesn't turn into an emotional Charlie horse. He said, dude, this sounds super hippie, warm, fuzzy stuff, but I'm going to do it because you're, you know, all the emotional coaching you've given me so far has been, has been super helpful and game changer for me. So I'm, I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> and I said, dude, absolutely give it a shot. I said, but you can't do it once and expect it to work. Like just like anything else, this emotional stuff, it's emotional muscle. So you got to, it, it takes practice. It takes exercise. It takes intention. And, uh, and, and you can do this. You can get this to, to work for you, but just be patient and give yourself lots of, of grace and space as you, as you work this out, you know, and you, and you figure this out. So I wanted to share that analogy with you guys and just, and just remember, right? Just remember that emotionally healthy people help heal other people emotionally. And if you'd like to, again, be a part of a supportive, safe, encouraging community to help you along your emotional growth journey, check out eqgangster.com forward slash mafia, eqgangster.com forward slash mafia.